Psalm 9, 
always loved this psalm, and I have very various melodies to that. I will praise you, I deny with my, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, Elion, O Most High. Hallelujah. And the second half is, O do la donai kitov ki leolam chazo. Give thanks to Adonai for he is good and his mercy or his love endures forever. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. Welcome to Torah Treasures. It's been a while. Um, just have a very short word in, in the light of what's happening in, in the whole world. Um, I noticed that there is such a spirit of heaviness in this season uh, amongst my friends in America, even us here in Israel. And, and I'm reminded of the scripture that says he gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So let us uh, receive that by faith because it's been pretty heavy. And um, but we press in. We press in. I understand now why both the wise virgins and the foolish virgins fell asleep. They were lulled to sleep because of the heaviness of the day, because of the heaviness of the times right before the Messiah comes. There will be such a heaviness that even the wise ones will sleep. But the good thing is that the wise one had prepared before they fell asleep. So before it gets even heavier and you're lulled to a deeper sleep, um, make sure you have all your oil. Make sure you have your vessel sanctified and ready to receive Mashiach, to receive the glory, to receive and to do the greater works that he promises. And I'm reminded also of uh, Adam. Adam was put into a deep sleep before God can create um, his uh, woman, his wife, Chava. And so I feel like maybe it's reversed, like right before our bridegroom comes, we will be all be put to a deep sleep but only those who are prepared, those who are ready, can become one with Him. So be encouraged, be strengthened, press into the high calling. And uh, yeah, let's keep praising Him because that's our food. It says in the Psalms every, that everything has breath, kol neshama to hallelujah. That everything that has soul, everything that has neshima, let them praise Yah because that's going to be our breath. Um, this past year, 2020, the theme was to 2020 is it started with um, the victims of police brutality crying out that I can't breathe, I can't breathe. George Floyd was one of them, cried out I can't breathe and other victims. And during that time was the lockdowns and the being forced to wear masks and all these things that are obstructing our breathing. It's interesting that this week's Torah portion, Vayera, no, last week God appeared to Moshe at the burning bush, but this, this time he's, he's explaining to Moshe that he had appeared to um, the patriarchs, Avram, Isaac, and Jacob, as El Shaddai. Not as yud heh vav -Hey, not as Yehovah or Yahweh, but as El Shaddai, he, he appeared to them. And now he's appearing to Moshe, and he's given him this new name to give to the children of Israel. So Moshe had his born again experience. He met Aye, the one that says, Aye, I am, I, I am that I am, I am ascending you. And, uh, and, and he also says he's the God of uh, his memorial, that he will be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's, it's important to know that he is the God of the, the three generations, which confirms something because it says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses God confirms so even God himself confirms himself as the God of Israel through the three um, and throughout the scriptures it says I will confirm a thing by two or three witnesses and this is memorial for all times um, and that helps us because you know there are others who claim that the God of Abraham is their God but they don't call their God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's one way God made sure. It's like, no, it's not confirmed through one. It's confirmed through three. And this is where, through your seed, Isaac, shall my covenant be, for, be fulfilled. So here you have this revelation that God has given this revelation to Moshe to give to the children of Israel. And that he's saying that even the patriarchs did not know me by yud heh vav -Hey. They knew me by El Shaddai. And El Shaddai could mean the God, the nourishing God, the God with breasts. You know, Shaddai, Shaddim is, is like um, breasts, but also you could say El Shaddai is the El 
Shaddai, die in Hebrew means enough. The God that is en- the God that is enough. Just like a baby, when a baby is born, all it knows is his mother. As the mother is is enough. He, the baby does not need steak or doesn't need a chicken and potato salad. It just the mother is enough. Shaddai. But as God wants us to grow, as we're about, to, we're coming of age. The children of Israel at this point are coming of age, for, for lack of better words. And, and they're coming into their Moresha. They're coming into their inheritance. God says, I will give them a Moresha. I will give them an inheritance that he had promised to their fathers, Avram, Isaac, and Jacob. And so in, in, all, in order to come into your inheritance, you need to come of age. And you need to know a different um, revelation, different understanding of who Hashem is, of who God is. And so this is where he's revealing himself to the children of Israel. And every time God's about to do something um, on a global scale, something like a national redemption, Kol Yisrael Yivasha, um, Paul says, all Israel will be saved. But Israel will be saved by a new name, by a new understanding of God. And just for all of us as well, whenever God's about to do a new thing, he's going to do it with a new understanding, with a new name of himself. And so this name has been revealed to the children of Israel for the first time. And, um, and it speaks to us as well that God will also speak to us by a new name. It even says in, in the book of Revelation, let me get there real quick. Yeshua speaking to the churches um, in Revelation 3, 11 to 12 says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. Interesting. Corona means crown. We've gone over that again. So this is a battle for our crown. Do not let anyone take away your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and never again shall they leave from there. I will write on them the name of my El, my Elohim, my God, and the name of the city of my God, and the new, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God, from my Elohim, And I will also write on them my new name. So even Yeshua, in his returning or his um, uh, final return to reign on earth, is coming with a new name. And he's going to write on us also his new name. So every time time God does something new, when he's establishing his kingdom, when he's establishing something, he comes with a new name. So we need to be... um, very close to him, intimate with him, so that we can know his new name, so we can know his uh, his heartbeat and know what he's thinking. And he wants to be in such deep, intimate relationship with us that he wants to give us his new name. He wants to give us his new attributes, his how he's going to appear, because he does not appear in the same way all the time. And even in Revelation, it tells that Yeshua, who came as the lamb to be sacrificed, who did not um, speak back when he was spoken to when he was being accused he's coming as a lion of Judah he's coming with um, hair of wool white hair of wool and flames of fire flame uh, comes out of his mouth he have um, eyes of flames and a sword comes out of his mouth to judge the nations so that's a different revelation of who Yeshua is we just tend to think of Yeshua as this gentle lamb and you know peace beyond turn your cheek to your neighbors um, no this Yeshua that's coming he's going to judge He's coming as El Nekamot, the God of vengeance. So he's coming in a different way. And if we don't understand that, then we might just miss him. We might just call evil good and good evil. We might call um, the Antichrist the good one and the real Messiah the bad one. If we're not understanding who he really is and what he's about and how he is coming. So it's so important to actually stay close to him, to let him guide us with his loving eye. And it's interesting in this Torah portion of Ayra, God says, I will bring them into the land. I will bring them. I will do all these things. But the prerequisite or precursor of that is that then they, they will know my name. Then they will know that I, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. You know, let's, let's, let's go there. Um, let's go to that scripture. Then they will know that I, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, I'm the one who delivers them. So what is the prerequisite or the precursor of coming into the land, knowing his name. And that word knowing is yada. It's like a, how a husband knows his wife and how a wife knows her husband. So it's intimacy. 
So we can only enter into this land, enter into this Morsha, enter into this inheritance through intimate relationship with Him. So it's very important. That's the prerequisite. That's needed. You cannot enter without knowing Him. You cannot enter without knowing His name. Um, and so it's so important to, to, um, to open our hearts to want to learn who he is and what his names are and 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 the new name that he will bring you know we we won't know it until he comes and he brings us that name even in revelation it says and no one would know except for the one that receives it when he gives us a new name um so there's also a new name he's going to write upon us like he says earlier he's going to write the name of the father upon us he also writes the name of the father upon the 144,000 those who are redeemed amongst israel so the name of the father is going to be sealed on their foreheads is the real mark, the mark of Hashem, is the name, yud heh vav -He, the name of the Father. And um, he's going to do that to the 144,000. I believe it says that in Revelation 14.1. Then I look and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his Father's name written on their foreheads. And these will follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They will sing a song that no one else knows. That speaks of intimacy. And when you walk with them, you will sing a song that nobody else is singing. You know, um, unfortunately, sometimes I listen to, to the worship that's out there. Everything is sounding the same. Everything's, everything is sounding alike. You know, no one's going deeper to know a, a, a song, a sound that no one else has. It's so important to go deep, to have a sound that sets you apart from everybody else. That's because you follow him wholeheartedly through obedience, radical obedience, observing his word, observing his commandments, and, and loving his word, loving the truth. We have to be a people who love truth because this world is a world of falsehood and deception. And the only way we're going to protect ourselves from all the lies and deception is by loving truth and, and, and embracing truth, embracing the truth of Abba's word from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You cannot omit or remove anything from His Word because if you do, then you're going to keep yourself from entering into the fullness. You're going to remove yourself from the fullness of the Morsha, of the inheritance that He wants to give you and He wants to give us. Let us read what it says here in 6, starting with verse 2. Vayedabel Elohim al Moshe. So again, and God spoke to Moshe and said to him, I am Yudhe Vav -He. However you want to pronounce it, Yudhe Vav -He, a name connected or acronym to to the one who was and is and is to come. The one who was Haya. The one who, who is Hove, present. And the one who will be Ye, Ye, Ye. But also the one who will come, Yavo. That's why in Revelation it says the one who was and is and is to come. It's speaking of the fullness of the name. That's what the name is about. The name is about I don't, I'm the one who was. I'm the one who was called El Shaddai. I'm the one who is a yeah, I will be what I will be. I'm the one who will come again. I'm the one who is. I am that I am. I'm the one who will be a yeah, or ye yeah. And I'm the one who will come. Yavo, the one who will come. So in all in that name, it's a um, it's telling of um, actions it's not a name about it's not just a name it's a, it's a verb name it's a verb that's constantly doing something it's a verb that's um, acting that is doing and it's promising that it will do what it will do and so that name is very powerful the all-encompassing um, omnipresent omniscient omnipotent Elohim says i will be what i will be i'm the one who was i'm the one who is and i'm the one who will be who will always be and i'm the one who will come again so 
When you understand that name, then you understand that he will come. Then you understand that you understand Zechariah um, 14, where it says, and, and the feet of yud heh vav -Hey will land upon the Mount of Olives, and the mountain will split, and rivers will flow from Jerusalem all the way to the Dead Sea. And in that day, continues in that day, um, Hashem will be one, yud heh vav -Hey will be one, and his name will be Echad. So in that day when his feet lands upon the Mount of Olives, we, we will understand that this one who's landing, he is the one who was and is and is to come. And in that day we will understand the unity of Hashem. We will understand the unity of the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. And because the Father and the Son, they are one. One entity, one unity. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that unity. We need to understand this, this, um, this God that will show up in your life as who he needs to show up in your life. You know, I can say I've known God as my shepherd. He led me, he guided me. The one who is um, Adonai Yira'eh, the one who sees to it, who provides for all of my needs. He's been El Shaddai, the one that's been enough. And he's been, and he's being Yud Hei Vave, the one that will constantly be and, and, and bring forth what he needs to bring forth he is the he is the past the present and the future and in knowing the intimate name we can rest we can rest when we know that intimate name that we will enter into our Moshe. we will enter into our inheritance and this is exactly what he's saying here in um let me see which verse So let's start with four again. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the children, the sons of Israel, I am yud heh vav -Hey. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great judgments. I will take you as my people. So this is like all actions that God would, that the name is doing. See that the name is just is is a name that's acting. It's rescuing. It's 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 um it's uh delivering. It's it's taking you as a people, and He will be your Elohim. And then you will know that I am yud heh vav -Hey. You will intimately know that I am yud heh vav -Hey, your Elohim, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Mitachat sivlot mitzrayim. You know, who brings you out from putting up with the Egyptians. Because some, sometimes we, 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 we make friends with our enemies. We make friends with our burdens, with our limitations we make friends with our in our exile we make friends with our enemies and god's like no i'm going to break you bring you out from even wanting to put up with the egyptians wanting to compromise and to be like oh okay well okay they're okay they're not too bad no i'm going to take you out from under there and you could tell the children of israel suffered from that because later on they wanted to go back to egypt constantly several times they wanted to go back it's the, what's called the Stockholm Syndrome. They wanted to go back under those who oppressed them. And in verse 8, And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and I will give it to you as a heritage. See, I, I, this was a gift to them, but to you it is an inheritance. It's a morsha. Um, in other words, God gave this land to our fathers, but we inherited as children of our fathers as an inheritance, as a heritage, as a Moshe. I am yud heh vav -Hey. You will, He will bring you into the land that he swore to give as a gift to the fathers, but now it's going to be yours as an inheritance or as a heritage. And what, what's needed before you can have this Moshe, is the knowledge of his name, is the intimate knowledge, then you will know that I am yud heh vav He wants us to know his name. He wants us to know his, um, who he is in an intimate way. In an intimate way. That's very important to know. Eight, so Moshe spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moshe because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage so 
They were in such despair that even when the prophetic word came, they couldn't receive it. Um, and again, if you liken that to, to the season that we're in, when I think of America, our friends in America, and, and the situation, the global situation, I feel like there are so many people who are losing hope. They're losing hope even when the prophetic voices are going out there telling them, do not fear, God has got this, He's on the, he, he, he has the victory, Hashem has the victory, and we don't look to any man, any government, we look to Him. Be still and know that He is yud heh vav -Hey. know that He is Elohim, know that He is El Shaddai, the God is more than enough, the God that will be, that is, and is to come. Um, there's, there are those, there are many that are still in despair. I sometimes speak to friends in, in, in America, and they all are losing hope. So many are losing hope. And so many, uh, uh, they cannot even hear the prophetic voices. They cannot even hear the hope. They cannot even, they cannot even behold the promises and the beauty and the, uh, and the wonderful words that of of. of exhortation and confirmation even prophetic words that are coming forth they cannot receive it because of the hard bondage because they cannot breathe just like um, this whole theme of last year 2020 was the year where w the victims were crying out we cannot breathe and we were being forced to to um uh, uh in a place where we cannot breathe with all the lockdowns and 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 the economy People are not able to breathe. And when you cannot breathe, when you're shortness of breath, then sometimes you can't even hear anything else. You didn't, you're you only concerned about the next breath because your shortness of breath, you're working so hard because of the anguish of spirit and the cruel bondage. Me'avodah kasha, ruach, yeah. So, because you're under these things you cannot hear so i want to encourage you that there's nothing new under the heavens as it was with children of israel so it's been to many right now many feel like they're under cruel bondage they cannot work their businesses are down the economy is down um they're being asked to do um let's say pay their rent pay their mortgage when they're you know there's no straw I can, you know, how do I, how do I build bricks? How can I go and pay my rent? How can I do all these things? Well, there's no straw. There's no money. There's no my business is my business is down and all these things. And God is saying, you know, um, just trust my word. Sometimes when God sends the prophetic and the prophets before the powers that be, it takes some time for the word to actually come to fruition. You see that God himself hardens the heart of Pharaoh just so he could show himself strong in the end. And also so he could annihilate them completely. As we read the next part of Shots, you know that the army, Pharaoh and his army were drowned to the sea. God sometimes lingers or waits to completely annihilate his enemies. So when you see that things are not happening as fast as you would like them to, to happen, it's just God is on the throne. He's orchestrating everything. He's just setting up his enemies. He's just bringing them to a place where there will be no more. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. So God will um, uh, um, um, take care of everything. We just need to hold on to our faith. We just need to be still and know that he is Elohim. We just need to come back to the breath of Yah, come back to a place of praise. It says in the Psalms, Kol neshamate halal Yah, everything that has breath, everything that has soul will praise Yah. So this is our food, this is our survival, is to praise Him, is to be in a place of worship and to not look to the waves and to the sinking, because we're sinking, it seems like we're sinking and the waves are coming, but if we keep our eyes on Him, keep our eyes on Kaddish Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, we keep our eyes on Yeshua, then we will not drown. He's always have His hand extended. His hands are stretched out still to all those who have ears to hear, to all those who want to um, behold Him in the midst of all of that. Let's be careful not to look at the ways, be careful not to look at um, uh, and listen to all the 
propagandas and the conspiracies. We need to be learned. We need to be knowledge of the times. We need to be as the sons of Issachar, knowing the times and the season. But we need to know the word in the light of what we're seeing. So that, and the word needs to be our, our guidance. It needs to be our plumb line, not what's happening around us. We need to be a people that are steady, firm. Our houses are built upon a rock and not sand. The storms will come, but make sure you're built upon a rock Tsu Yeshua Tenu, the rock of our salvation. And when the winds come and the storms come and they and they're gonna beat the house and beat the, the situation, beat, beat you know, make things hard, take away the straws, you have to build bricks, but you keep our eyes on him, he will bring deliverance. And he wants us to in, in the midst of all of that, he wants us to know his name. He wants us to intimately know him. And in knowing him, then we can um, begin the process of leaving Egypt so that we can um, enter into our morsha, into our heritage, into our inheritance. It's very important to know that every time that God does something, he reveals his name. He reveals his new name. So do not resist when you come in to know the new names of God, the new names of your Messiah. Many are resistant, don't resist it because that's how you know you're growing. That's how you know you're coming into intimacy. That's how you know you're coming into a new place. You know, many have known Yeshua for years as Jesus, but he's Yeshua and some people resist that name, but that very name means salvation. It means deliverance and needs healing. So that name is telling you what he's about to do. He's about to deliver you. He's about to save you with a complete salvation. He's about to, to heal you with complete healing. And so, you know, Yud Hei Vav Hei, the one who was and is, and is to come, he was, he, he is in your past, he is in your present, he will be in your future, he's already there. And so we need to understand these, and when we understand these intimately, then we can enter into our Morsha. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful word, and beautiful um, uh, um, exhortation to my brothers and sisters. I hope you're able to receive it. Um, again, please pray for me to be able to do these teachings more often it's uh, always a challenge but i just felt like okay every week i have something to say but it's just the actual getting in front of the camera and to do it sometimes so challenging um, but i just wanted to leave it with this short word i hope you're blessed shabbat shalom and chodesh tov it's also a new new month and uh, in the new Jerusalem, the new earth, it says the new heavens in Isaiah 66 we will continue to worship on shabbat and on the Rosh Chodesh, and on the new moon. So um, those are the things you also need to acquaint yourself with. Shabbat is so important for revival. Shabbat is so important for um, um, the restoration of all things. And we need to understand the times and seasons. And we need to enter into a Shabbat, enter into his rest. We need to learn to be still and know that he is Elohim. If we practice Shabbat, I promise you, then you, when all hell breaks loose, you'll be able to be in a place of rest. I believe many have been struggling with these lockdowns and these times of quiet, these times of because they've never had Shabbat, they've never practiced Shabbat. But those of us who practice Shabbat live in a place of Shabbat. We live in a place of rest. Yes, this is still challenging for, this, for us as well, but not as challenging or crazy as it is for those who have never learned to enter into rest who have never learned to stop and cease and to rest and be still and to know that he is hashem so practicing shabbat will help you deal with these things more than those who do not practice it so welcome the shabbat embrace it shut everything down sanctify yourself and sanctify the day unto him because those shabbat is a sign unto um, uh, um, that we belong to him a sign unto the children of israel that in that in seven days god created the heavens and the earth in six days he created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And that's given unto the children of Israel and unto all those who are grafted to Yeshua as a sign. We are signs to the whole world that he is Elohim, that he is the God of creation, and that Elohim, he is yud Hey vav Hey, Yehovah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Chodesh Tov.
Bayamahu Bayamahu you all. Take care. In that day, Adonai will be one and his name Echad. God bless. Chodesh Tov, Shavuot Tov, and Kol Tov. Everything good. God is good. Go and praise him. Kol Neshama Tehalalia. Everything that has breath, Neshima. Kol Neshama. All the souls will praise him. So go and praise him and be encouraged. God is on the throne. Who knows? Maybe he's about to do great miracles and bring you into our Morsha. God bless you.